The First Amendment lives here. And the 2A2, The Daily Mojo. I don't want to let this thing die. I don't. This story out of Lahaina and the fires, and you know it's uh, it's being starting to be ignored in the mainstream media, so I wanted to make sure that uh, we were you know coming straight to you to find out what uh, you're hearing on the uh, coconut wireless. See, I remember what it was this time. Um, and yes. what are the what are the things you are hearing over there? And before actually before you tell me, I wanted to read a couple of things that I found online. I think I sent you the PolitiFact thing. Um, over at PolitiFact, now they are saying uh, this headline, uh, more than 60 people are missing after Maui fires, not 1,000 children. This is, again, the, this is PolitiFact. So the first thing I think of uh, when I see that is, you know, it's the opposite of well, that. Well, and how did, because... we ever, how did we ever get to that funky number of 1,000, 2,000 children? Right. At the very at the very least, there's a bunch of incompetence happening yeah. uh, over there because they can't count. The, uh, the government can't count. What are you hearing over there as far as the, the kids are concerned, first of all? Well, I think that number that they came up with is completely um, exaggerated to their favor. The Board of Education actually did a breakdown. Um, I did a little research from another channel and they actually went to the Board of Education site for um, Lahaina Luna, the school district, and they came with 3,000 children and 500 are back in school and like five, I think it was 538, five or 438 are doing the distance learning Right. But that left about 2,000, um, roughly, 2,000 that are either unaccounted for or undetermined, maybe undetermined. And right. some say they could have moved to another island. Some say they could have uh, relocated even to the mainland, which I think is a little far-fetched. I know that they did re relocate some families to the big island um, because it was an uproar. You know, they... they lost right. their people but right. 2,000 children uh, so they they started hustling some of the numbers around again and found that some of the children were old enough to just drop out not go back to school but that number okay. has shifted down to 1,200 so it's the that's the, the number really is about 1,200 undetermined okay yeah and that's what it says over at Hawaii News Now uh, Dot com. That's there. I, I don't know. Is this? A, are they an NBC affiliate? I don't know uh, about Hawaii uh, News now. CB. But yeah. say CBS. Okay. I think CBS. So they're one of the. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So they're they're a mainstream media yeah. outlet. So it's again, I. It sucks to be able or it sucks to have to look at at news sources. And go well, they're probably lying, or you know, they're just spouting off the. Uh, the official government line. Um, all right, so we. The bottom line is this: it doesn't. It doesn't seem like the numbers add up either way, because uh, we've gone from, uh, I guess, the initial two thousand down to sixty, which, again, part of that is the FBI with their vote, uh, quote unquote verified list that they're putting out each Friday. They're going to have another one today, and then the governor. I called him Doug Jones the other day. It's not Doug Jones. It's um, what's the what's the governor's name? Josh, Josh Green. Green. Josh Green. Um, Our trade. So he, uh, yeah. I just, I mean, he um, was on Hawaii News Now on their uh, program on uh, on YouTube, and um, he started talking about. Uh, I think it, this is either the reopening or some of the lies. I'm just going to play this so you can hear it so we can uh, go from there. Here we go in three, two, one. That's unfortunate. It's not a lot of people, but when you start talking about laser beams and heat rays coming from space that would take out of people in Maui, come on, let's get real. All right, so he's, again, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know, and they still don't know what officially caused the fires. There's no official cause yet, correct? Exactly. No cause. And they're just, um, in his words, they're just moving forward. So uh, they are doing an investigation, 
but not all the officials are required to be interviewed. It's all volunteer. So they're going through a third party wow. source and they can show up if they like. And uh, as far as ma the mayor, uh, Vice, uh, Bisson, uh, he says he's not going to judge him. Uh, he's, he's not going to, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, and the, and, this, and the mayor and both of these guys, I, I will say this, Josh Green has, has said more words than uh, uh, the mayor, Richard Bisson. Uh, Bisson, it seemed like every time somebody was trying to talk to them, uh, talk to him, he would just ignore them. And a lot of citizen journalists you saw tried to talk to him, and he just wouldn't say anything. What's his deal? He's actually a former judge, and I think his temperament, right, right, and lawyer, there you go. Um, super skeptic, super pessimist is the feeling that I'm getting from him. But he, they say he's kind of a no-nonsense. I think he's more of, he's got his own opinion. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't fall within his opinion, then it doesn't count. That's, so that's, Fact, that's, it's, that's it's, what I'm getting from him. Yeah. As soon as you said judge, it's like, yeah, that's, <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I, lawyer, remember, judges are just lawyers with cuter outfits. Uh, all right, so here is a uh, uh, an interview that he did, I guess, this week with uh, KHON, where he's talking about, I think this is the reopening. And again, he's saying more words here than I think I've ever seen him say. Um, but talk to me about, you know, where do you see the future of Lahaina? I believe the governor is announcing that they're going to be reopening certain portions of Kaunapali on October 8th. Some people feel... It's too soon. I mean, what are your thoughts on, on the reopening of the West Side? Clearly, we're not reopening Lahaina. Uh, clearly, that's the case. Uh, I think what the governor is talking about is from maybe Kaanapali to Kapalua, businesses that can accommodate uh, customers. But what I, I want to focus on is meeting with our community, which we will start very soon, scheduling public meetings. I want to listen to our community's concerns I want to hear and, and maybe even agree with their frustrations. I want to know what their challenges are. I want to know what they hope for. And I want to hear directly from them. And then we can advise the governor on how the community feels about that. Okay, so it looks like October 8th, they're going to start, in theory, opening things back up. What's the general <clears throat> feeling, excuse me, going on around there as far as opening up? Because I know sometimes tourism... Tourism is a double-edged sword in Hawaii. Mm. It's, you know, it brings in a lot of money, but at the same time, tourists can be a giant pain in the tuchus. I get it. Uh, what's, the, what's the general feeling over there now? Uh, I would say um, they want people to come. They, we, you know, the, the, a lot of people work in the hospital, hospitality industry, and this is their income, their, their, how they fortify their families. So they really do, but they're in mourning and they hope that the tourists will be respectful. Um, and I, I know that a lot of people, uh, actually there's a lot of reports that some of the tourists were already in the ocean in Lahaina the day after, uh, which I think was a little strange uh, for them to want to do that because the water was almost black. Uh, but but I have seen photos of uh, sitting on surfboards and things. So, you know, just uh, if they can um, give the people who, especially in that area, a little space, uh, you know, um, but please come. The rest of the island, this is just the west side. So the rest of the island is right. open. So please come. Um, and that's the, the other thing is that, uh, you know, Oprah and her crew uh, they started, uh, was it she and uh, Dwayne Johnson started that fund, and then there was a lot of backlash because she owns, I think uh, Maui's only, was it 6,000 acres, and she owns like 1,000 of them. So she owns a, right. a big chunk of the, of the island. And she was surprised at the backlash from this fund that they had set up that uh, she said they modeled after Dolly Parton's thing. But People were suspicious of where that money was going to end up going. And 
and to be fair, the two of them did put in millions of dollars. But uh, what was the why the backlash? Do you think to uh, to Oprah and uh, and and Dwayne Johnson's fund? Did uh, she just come across as untrustworthy? What was the feeling there? Well, it's almost like being in one of those uh, mudslides where the mud is just coming and it doesn't, you know, you can't get your footing, doesn't, it, it's going to overtake you any second. Uh, they say that they wanted to do this fund and have people fundraise, but they have the funds. What's the fundraising when you already have the funds? And she has the space it would have been more feasible for her to say she's opened up part of her land, which she has land that's not even developed. So she could have right. provided space. She could provide, you know, she provided um, the first couple of days. She brought, went over to Costco and bought pillows and pillowcases and took them over to the people. And because uh, she said she wanted to do her part, a pillow and a pillowcase for a, a billionaire. You know, it just so the people there are feeling like she's way disconnected, um, not a part of the community. And of course, there's all the rumors you can't, um, you know, substantiate. But when you have your morning, you don't want somebody, you know, who has all this money asking you for money. You know, it just is right. very, uh, it's in bad taste. Right, right. It uh, It did come across. A little strange and people are generally skeptical anymore and I don't blame them I mean I think we're all skeptical um, and I read that poll a couple of weeks ago that most Americans don't trust other Americans <laughs> for whatever reason so I think that that's you know that shows itself in situations like this but it would be nice to think that there are and I know that there are a lot of good people out there in the uh, that are listening that you want to help and don't know how to help. Um, are, are you aware of a good solid way to provide if somebody wanted to just give, I don't know, 10, $5, do you have any idea of what fund or where they should turn to be donating? And you may not, um, I just I sprung this one on you. Sorry. Oh no. Yeah. There's, I think that it's called, um, Maui strong is one of the, uh, but to be quite honest, I think to avoid uh, service fees and having having people paying for administrative fees, if you can find Venmos or GoFundMe, go yeah, GoFundMe's or you know right. that line and go directly to the people, that would be the best. Um, I, unfortunately, Red Cross. I'm hearing a lot of the money is is getting wrapped up in red tape and very little is making its way down. FEMA is making you like qualify. So if you donate, you know, anything to a FEMA uh, establishment, like, well, the Red Cross is, is um, funded by the government as well. So anything that kind right. of gets wrapped up in the government, then it's a lot of paperwork. These people don't even have a piece of paper. They're starting from zero. So, you know, they just, they need money. They need um, a sense of stability, uh, not red tape and paperwork. So, yeah, gotcha. if you can find, yeah, a local. Um, and and, and as you, uh, if you get more information on it, you can always text me and, and let me know and I'll, I'll put it out there. But keep oh, going. Sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, uh, no, not a problem. Um, I just wanted to really quickly go back to the children um, mm -hmm. I appreciate that they said that they closed the schools because of the high winds and they drove them home. Well, we're actually having a shortage of drivers for school buses. Uh, they said there was uh, like 650 buses and 650 drivers before COVID. Now they're down to 500 drivers and they've um, the chartered other companies and one of them is like a cinema company to drive the children to and from so it's not just a yellow school bus it could be um, a tourist shuttle van with children inside that they might have put and then I, I have to ask does a second grader know their address um, do they have a key to the house you right. know how did they get into their home when they said they sent them home 
as a parent, that to me seems completely odd. Um, also, why are they, a lot of phones, eight-year-olds have cell phones. Why can't they ping these phones and see if there's activity or the last activity? And, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a fire, but I just have questions right. about all of that. No, I totally agree with you. And that's the thing. I mean, we, we have no answers. We can speculate. But what did happen to these kids? Where are they? And I, I, for whatever reason, and maybe it just comes from the government and I don't trust them, this number of 60 people uh, that are now, you know, missing uh, and the death toll still at 115. And they have identified half of those roughly. They're just things that don't add up. And again, combine that with the immediate response from these government so-called leaders. And it leaves people like us very skeptical mm -hmm. of their, their final conclusions. And then we haven't heard anything lately from a uh, uh, police chief. What's his name? Uh, Vegas oh. guy. Yeah, him. Pelletier. Pelletier, right. So have you all heard anything over there? Has he been speaking up? I haven't seen much of him lately. No, they. I think they have pulled him out of the limelight a little. Uh, he's, yeah, he, he got a Sketchy. lot of, yes, and a hothead. Um, mm -hmm. He's the first non-native uh, Hawaiian chief they've ever had. So that was one. He got he asked for a pay raise because he felt like he should be making more money because some of the people he was going to be working above was making more money than what they offered. And they actually yeah. doubled his offer and gave him twice the amount he asked for, um, which is all, and then have, before he even started. Have they given it to him yet, though? Have they given it to him? I had read uh, that they hadn't decided, but they, they got, went ahead and gave him the raise. They did, and a lot of people resigned and, and retired early because it was offensive because the policy is one year before any um, uh, promotion or anything like that. So he just he skipped the line so many times. And, uh, you know, I, him being a coroner, he has zero medical background. So uh, right. a lot of people don't understand how he can diagnose, he can... Um, they said it was a temporary position, but it's actually in his, in his contract. It does say that he could take on that if they ask him. The com the commissioner said uh, that he would be a corner, and he accepted that. So I don't understand how he could accept a job he's not qualified to do. Uh, right. it's, it's just it's more questions. Yeah. It, it, and that's the worst part because nature abhors a vacuum. And when we have these questions and we're already suspicious of what any of these government entities are doing, the fact that they've been operating, at least from the outside, the way it looks like they've been operating in Lahaina is to shut the whole thing down, not even let the owners of the properties get in there uh, yeah. under the guise of, well, it's public safety. We can't possibly let the owners of the property get in there and be exposed to x y and z whatever the chemicals are and i'm sure there are chemicals but i mean if it were me i'd be like let me clean up my own mess it's my stuff and well, you're absolutely right and that is um uh, sorry um it is their stuff but everyone else has stepped on shifted through their stuff and before they got a chance to so they were there were some um the, the rescue and recovery group with the dogs they got to go through and and step and you know search. Then the FBI went through. Then FEMA went through. Uh, then uh, the EPA now is going through. And now this um, uh, part of Billy Graham's uh, the Good Samaritan group, uh, Good Samaritan right. Purse. They're literally shit going through with um, grates and things of each piece and setting things aside that they're finding. Uh, Everyone has gone through their stuff, and and it's not even the owner. <laughs> it's right. tragic, and it's they, crazy. They actually are finding bones. They are finding bones still. 
Right. So, you know, well, and then that, that, and we only have about a minute left. And I did, that was what I laid awake literally last night thinking if there are 115 confirmed dead, if there are only 60, uh, whatever they said now missing, what are they, uh, and they're concerned that they're, I guess that could only mean that there are 60 people, human remains, not to be indelicate, but within that area now. Uh, right. It, the, again, it's the numbers that seem fuzzy to me. I don't quite know how to explain it other than it just doesn't feel right. But, and it also doesn't feel right that, like you said, there's a bunch of people going through other people's stuff. And, uh, it, you know, the whole thing just, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel uh, above board, I guess. And, um, and I, I know Ron feels the same way. We appreciate you and, and we want to help you all any way we can from afar. Thank you. Um, anything that I missed and you want that you want to add or should I let you go to back to uh, bed now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I appreciate you both and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to hang out with you all and you know say hi to the chat for everybody but I wanted to say I had an idea we might be able to squash that 115 number if everyone okay. who can find a photo I, people have iCloud, cloud. people have family in other places. If they can hold up a photo of the people they lost or a neighbor that they can't find, anything, in, a dog, a cat, hold it up and let's count. That would be a physical way. And once we got past 115, I'm sure it would, it would circle that number right. three times over. All right. Uh, then they, it would be a physical proof. Um, but people are sad and people are mourning right now. And uh, that would be a hard, uh, but I think that would be a, a way for people to stand, see a face and see a picture of someone missing. And they would go, okay, they lied to us. They've been lying to us. Right. All right. We'll talk and we'll, we'll see if we can't flesh that idea out. Um, Kiki, thank you again. We love you, and uh, we're with you. Uh, go get some rest, and uh, we'll we'll talk again soon. Take care. Watch and listen at thedailymojo.com.